G'day everyone. Today I'm going to try and catch a redfin. It's the middle of winter. I don't know how I'll go, but if there's one thing I do know about redfin is that they're a very hit and miss fish. Some years they'll fish really well in this waterway and poorly in that one. Then the following year they'll fish really well in that one and poorly in that one. Some years, some waterways will have an abundance of redfin and this warmer, this summer just gone, like Buffalo was that spot, it went nuts. And yet other years it has nothing. So I think redfin are probably the hardest fish to understand of all the freshwater fish here in northeast Victoria. So I think if I'm gonna catch a fish, it's probably gonna be a redfin because the others might be just too switched off. Who knows? There's a 50-50 chance that I might catch a fish or I might not catch a fish. Nobody will know, but I'll tell you what, it beats being at home. I was gonna stay home today and watch a movie called Constipation, but it's not out yet. <laughs> I'm sorry folks, you can blame my mate Wooly for that one. Wooly and I have been best mates all our lives. In fact, our mums shared the same hospital hospital room in the labour ward at the Wangaratta Hospital in July 19, 1975, that long ago, before TVs even had colour in them. And our birthday is next week, both of us. And he's a great guy. And, I, and I'll tell you something else about Wooly, he's very tall. He is so tall. You know where he met his last girlfriend? At the top of a stepladder. <laughs> I better go and catch a fish. Rightio folks, I've arrived at my destination. I've chosen to start with a Strike Tiger Nymph in white bait pearl colour. I like white soft plastics for redfin, or orange, bright orange, bright yellow. I just like bright colours for redfin. I'm using the smallest jig head that I can get away with, and at the moment that's a 162, sorry, a 1 16th ounce, because, because it's so cold, the fish aren't active, which means that they don't want to chase lures that are rocketing through the water at 100 mile an hour. So by using something with a really light head, the sink rate will be slower, the retrieve rate will be slower, and it will just come through the water a lot slower and present itself in the fish's face for a little bit longer. And that might be the difference between getting a strike and getting ignored. So I'm going to cast it out. By going with a light jig head, I've actually sacrificed quite a bit of casting distance. I've only been able to cast about half way along the length of this pool that I'm fishing because the jig head is just too light. But even now, I'm watching it sink. It's already been five or six seconds and it hadn't hit the bottom yet. There we go, we've just landed on the bottom. For the retrieve, I'm just gonna tap, 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 tap. Give three or four little jolts, make it swim up, then it'll allow it to sink. Half a dozen little jolts to make it swim up, then allow it to sink. Just keep giving it those jolts, then letting it sink. I think they call that a rolling retrieve, but I'm not sure. I'm not real good with big words. <laughs> I'm not real good with technical data. So tap, 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 tap. And now let it sink. Oh, that's... Just hit the bottom. Tap, 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 tap. Let it sink a little bit. Tap, 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 tap. Let it sink a little bit. Tap, 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 tap. Let it sink a little bit. The reason I say tap, tap is because I'm jerking the line from slack to tight, slack to tight. And what that does, it sends a shock through the line. It just helps put a little bit of feel for the fish. You know, it puts a little bit of a vibration through the water. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. So rather than just pulling tight and keeping tension on the line, I give it sharp little jabs just to actually make the line go twang and just send a bit of a vibration through. Rightio folks, it's time to make a few changes. If that hasn't worked, I'm gonna to have to up my jig head size. Ideally, I want the smallest head that I can get away with, but I wanna be able to cast out further and cover more water. So it's a case of have to go for a heavier jig head. So I'm gonna go and change that now and then make some further casts into corners of the pool that I haven't fished yet in the hope of locating a red Rightio thing. folks, let's try again. This time I've gone to one eighth of an ounce jig head, which is quite heavy, heavier than I would prefer, but I need that casting distance. So it's a case of have to. And I've changed color to the orange spawn nymph. I had the white bait pearl on, I've now gone with the orange spawn and I've left the claws on. You can actually rip the claws off or leave them on with these soft plastics. I'll show you. You can see them there with the claws on. I'm leaving the claws on just to keep it looking a bit bigger and bulkier. 
I'll take the claws off later on if I need to. But for now, I've got that extra casting distance and that's what I need. And that's right down the bottom end of the hole that I haven't even fished yet. I haven't made a single cast down there yet. Who knows? It's a lot shallower down there, but who knows? This time of year, the water's cold. Perhaps the fish might be sitting in the sun. So many theories. You just never know which one's right. And this time of year, they're usually all wrong. <laughs> That's the other problem with heavier jig heads. They tend to snag more. <laughs> Radio, folks. This particular mission so far in this pool has been about as successful as a North Korean missile launch. I might head upstream and just see if I can find a hungry fish somewhere else. Times are tough in the Jolly, I can tell you. <laughs> Radio, folks. I have switched over to my HD VCS video camera sunglasses for the purpose of convenience. Rightio folks, I've just pulled up at the hottest of the hot spots. I've already tried three or four different spots that I really like and that I usually have success and I've done no good. Have not even had a touch. If I don't catch a fish here, then I'm not going to catch a fish anywhere in this particular waterway today. But it's great to be back out in the sunny outdoors, enjoying what I love best. And I tell you what, I haven't been doing much fishing lately and today I am just casting like a demon. My casts have all been on point, which is really, really good. I think if I don't catch a fish, I'm putting it purely down to the cold water. The water is just too cold, everything's too cold, but it's still great to be out trying. Let's just give it one last crack down in these next couple of uh, nice holes. These are my little honey holes. These are the holes where I usually catch something. Gee whiz, I thought I caught one then. <laughs> I thought finally, but it wasn't to be. This pool was the most productive pool for me last summer. If I can't catch a redfin in here today, chances are I'm not going to catch one anyway. Oh, there's a follow. There's a big redfin. There's a big redfin right near my feet. I had a follow. I wonder if my lure was just moving too fast. He followed it. I had a big redfin follow my lure. I'm not joking. He followed it, but he didn't take it. I wonder if I should go to a lighter jig head or even a minnow. If I don't see him again, I'm... Here he is having a go with the other. He followed it again, he actually opened his mouth two or three times, but didn't take it. I actually watched him open his mouth and try and just grab it, but not very hard. No sign of him that time. Tell you what folks, I think I'm going to have to swap to a minnow. I've found a fish, but he's still, I know there's one here and he's active, kind of, but he's still not aggressive. I might take this soft plastic off and put on a big minnow and see if I can use that minnow to play on the fish's aggression rather than hunger, if that makes sense. See if I can get him to hit my lure out of aggression rather than because he's hungry. Rightio, my casting has been on point today, but my knot tying hasn't. 
I think I just tied about eight knots, eight loop knots, or seven or eight loop knots before I got one that I was happy with, and I'm still not happy with it. <laughs> Here's where we're at. I've been fishing with soft plastics for the last couple of hours. I have not even seen a fish. I fish a lot of the spots that I often have success in. I've come to this, my favourite little redfin spot, and on the first cast, I've had a redfin around about 30 centimetres long come out and open his mouth. And he'd done that for two or three casts, but he wouldn't take it. So he wasn't really aggressive, and it's like he wasn't quite hungry enough. For whatever reason, he was reluctant to take that. So I've gone to a minnow. I've gone to a really brightly coloured minnow this time, in the hope that it might just you know, upset the fish. Just bright colours tend to stir fish up a little bit and just make them, rather than feeding out of out of hunger, it makes them want to feed more out of aggression. That's a theory that I've got. When they're hungry, I'll give them something natural looking for them to feed on, like a little wild bait minnow. But in this case here, I've gone with a little Zerek minnow because I just want that really bright colour. And also because the hooks are at the back. With the soft plastic, the hooks aren't at the back of the lure. So if the fish does hit it, even gently, it won't hook up. Whereas even if a fish hits this gently, it could very well result in a strike. This is unbelievable. Cannot take a trick. Well, yeah, this is the last hole I'm going to fish. Then I'm going to go and fish another hole that I already fished because I saw a fish follow my lure. This is my last virgin pool, <laughs> I suppose you could say. I always reckon when you change lures a lot during the day, it's a sign that the fish is slow. I reckon that's about my tenth lure change. <laughs> I've actually gone back to what I started with at the very start. A really small 1 16th jig head with a strike tiger nymph in white bait pearl colour. The only fish that I've seen today actually followed one of my strike tiger nymphs in, swallowed it, followed it into my feet. That was the only fish that I've even seen. So I've gone back to the plastic. But I've gone to a smaller jig head so that I can fish it slower and just keep it in the fish's face a bit longer. Rightio, this is my last chance. This is the only spot today where I've seen a fish and he followed my soft plastic it would not take it. So now I'm back with the same sort of soft plastic but a different colour and a lighter jig head. Righty, I've just arrived back at my car. Thank you all very much for watching. I apologise for the lack of fishing action in this particular video, but unfortunately that's just the nature of the game in the middle of July in northeast Victoria. Things are very tough. It was great to get out. I almost caught one, so all is not lost. I know where there are still redfin for me to come and catch when the weather warms up. I hope that a few of you people have picked up some tips just from listening to me talking as I made this video because if you employ some of the tactics and techniques that I have used today at the right times of the year when the weather's a bit warmer in a, in a waterway containing redfin I can just about guarantee you will catch redfin. I was doing everything right, I was casting well, the fish just weren't playing the game. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I've got lots more fishing videos coming your way as soon as trout season opens in September.